Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adeze and I'm a mommy YouTuber from Post Harcourt, Nigeria. So, if you're new to my channel, you're welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. Now today, I'm just going to jump right into today's video. I'm going to be answering your questions concerning infertility and my journey. I asked you guys to send me questions and I got a lot of questions, so I'm going to answer them. And I'll try and be as brief as possible on each question because I have a lot to answer and I really want to answer everyone who sent me a question. But let me just give you guys a brief background to why I decided to make this two days ago. I was actually in church and I don't know, the pastor was just preaching about something. I don't know what he was preaching. I can't remember what exactly he said. But what ministered to me was um, do a video about your infertility journey and ask people to ask you questions so that you can answer and help people. So it was really clear in my mind. So I quickly just jotted it down on my um, phone. But as usual, it's not my first time of getting such messages and writing it down and doing nothing about it. So immediately I got home. Um, just as I relaxed to start, you know, just enjoying my day, I saw a video from Tolu Lopez Solutions here on YouTube. If you guys don't know her, please check her out. She's an amazing, I love her content basically. She talks about faith, lifestyle, you know, motherhood and all that. So I saw a video from her uploaded that same afternoon about her infertility journey. And I was like, okay, okay, exactly the kind of quest, the kind of uh, video I wanted to make was what, um, was what she made. I was like, okay. But even at that, I still do not uh, like start trying planning to do the video immediately. Two days after, someone sent me a DM asking me questions about my journey, about the drugs I took, about this, about that. And I was like, you know what? Let me just listen to the Holy Spirit and make this video. So that is why we're here today. And thank you so much for everyone who answered, who sent me questions. I'm going to try as much as possible to answer to the best of my knowledge. Like I said in my post disclaimer, I am not a doctor, I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a fertility specialist, I'm just a regular person who went through the journey for four good years, so I'm kind of a person that likes to research a lot, a lot, so that those four years were, were like mini medical school for me on Dr. Google, from Dr. Google Academy, so yeah, so I researched a lot and I also talked to so many doctors during that period, so anybody I can help with extra information, even if it's information you knew about, this is me reminding you about what you already know and yeah so basically i'm just going to um start i'm going to read out the questions but i'm not going to mention the names of those who sent the questions for obvious reasons yeah so let's just jump right into it all right so the first question is did you conceive naturally what was your biggest fears when you stayed without conceiving did i conceive naturally yes and no yes in the sense that i did not do ivf and no because i took um an ovulation simulating drug or something like that during that period and supplements so it didn't happen just on its own but i didn't do something major like ivf the next question is i don't know if it's related but was there a point in your journey where you just gave up no i never gave up for one day <laughs> like no 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 there was no day when i gave up the thing is that i have always wanted to be a mom in fact i've i wanted to be a mom much more than i wanted to get married i don't know if that makes sense i've always wanted to get married too but being a mom was so much more important to me so there was no day that i gave up yes there were times when the devil was knocking on my brain telling me give up 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 but I kept insisting, no, 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 okay? So no, I never gave up. So my question is generally about your emotions during the waiting period. How did you feel? Wow, this is a very important question and this is a part where so many people do not address. Emotions during that period, like it's always, it goes high, low. You go for checkups, you go for them, to, you go for checkups. You know, when you're waiting for your results, you're hoping for the best. Sometimes you're hoping they don't find anything so that you can conceive quickly. Sometimes you're hoping they find so that they can, they can cure it. There are times that you, in fact, it was just an emotional roller coaster. Like, I don't wish it on anybody. There were so many highs, there were so many lows, so many much more lows than highs. So many disappointments. I was sad for a very long time. I was almost, well, I won't say I was depressed. I was never really depressed. But I withdrew from so many people. I was... 
I isolated myself. I didn't want anybody to ask me stupid questions. I didn't want anybody to say anything to trigger me. I didn't want to see anything that would trigger me. I stayed away from social media for a while. You know, so many things happened during that period. Emotionally, it was just like you need the grace of God to remain sane going through such. Okay, what is the root cause of infertility, especially when both partners are good to go, as approved by a doctor? Um, root cause of infertility. So many things can cause infertility, infections, some birth defects. So many things can cause infertility. Um, I'm guessing this person is asking about unexplained infertility. If it's unexplained, then you can't really tell what the cause is. But I'll leave a link below to um, a video I saw that explained some of the causes that my trigger or some of the things that might cause um on un unexplained infertility i'll leave that link below one of the things the lady talked about sounds like something that must have happened to me so there are so many reasons why stress stress can actually cause infertility because a lot of things come into play when your body and everything comes into play into how your body reacts and how your body you know accepts a baby and all that anyway i don't go too deep into that but there are really so many causes. How did you deal with your husband's family members? You guys, I was very lucky. Like I was very lucky. No, I, don't, I didn't hear. I didn't hear him from his family members. My husband is the kind of person that I'm sure they know the kind of person he is. I'm sure they know that they can't try that. They can't try it. Like he's not the kind of person that will tolerate such. So I don't think anybody told him anything. And even if they did, I did not hear him from anybody. Please, do you know anything about peace? Um, I'm sure she means PCOS. Do you know anything about PCOS? Because my friends were diagnosed with PCOS and had been married for five years with no children. Another friend of mine was diagnosed with left fallopian tube blockage after trying for two years. Okay, for this, the first one, PCOS. PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's um i don't know I, I think it's a hormonal condition basically and it doesn't allow your um, eggs to mature for fertilization so that's just a layman term so please don't, don't take my word for it you can google it, google it yourself but i know that it's usually hormonal and it's um um it causes infertility some people actually get pregnant with pcos no problems while some people it causes infertility in them so um for me, basically, I would advise anybody that has PCOS, see your doctor, there are drugs that actually help with it. There are drugs that help with it, but also your diet is very important. If you can do keto, this is my personal advice. If you can do keto, please do, because when you do keto, you your body starts running on fat instead of carbs, and carbs, I don't know, I know that carbs actually contribute to that hormonal imbalance that causes PCOS. Try and do keto if you can. Even if you cannot do keto, try and eat very healthy and reduce your carb intake, reduce your processed sugars to the minimum. Like if you can do without it, please do without it, at least for the time being, so that you can have your kids. But there are also, you should also see your doctor. Don't just stay at home and be doing keto, please. See your doctor. There are drugs that help with it. Many people don't know that PCOS is actually one of the easiest infertility causes to cure. Yeah, I don't know if my English makes sense. Please, if I'm not sounding right today, you guys, I'm not feeling too well. All this makeup on my face is just to hide the fact that I've not slept so well and I'm not really feeling too well. So please, just try and understand my English. Anyhow, the thing enters. As far as you get the point, just get it. And if you don't get the point, please comment down below. Leave a comment in the comment section. Just tell me to explain more about anything. And I'm, I'll be glad to explain it better in the comment section or give you links to something you can read. How did you cope through the weight? Thank God for talking about this. God bless you. Oh, thank you so much. God bless you too. Now, how did I cope through the weight? See, you guys, I can't really say one way I cope through the weight, but these are tips that I'll give anybody that is going through it. First of all, faith in God. I don't know if you're a Christian. If you're not a Christian, I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain what you should do, but if you're a Christian, I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. You have to have faith in God. Children are a gift from God. They are a gift. So, if you want children, please um, have faith in God. Believe in God. Pray about it. And just have faith. And see, this thing that we call faith, a lot of us don't know what faith is. Faith is without a doubt. Faith is without a doubt. Faith is in spite of evidence of fear or evidence to give you fear is faith is in spite of evidence that says otherwise you believe that okay yes 
they say I have this, they say this is wrong with me, they said that I believe that God is going to give me kids. So faith is very important and when you have faith, there are some things you will not do. Number one is you will not confess positive. Don't say, hey, I don't have children, no, my life is over. It means that you don't have faith, okay? Once you have faith, bridle your tongue, be careful of what you say. You can think them, like, see, there's nothing, there's no harm against thinking some things because as you are, the devil is putting, so many things are crossing through your brain, the devil, social media, media, people around you, they are putting things into your head. So what enters your head is not really the problem. It's what comes out of your mouth and what you dwell on. And trust me, once you dwell on something, with time, it will come out of your mouth. So be careful what you say do not say otherwise have faith confess positively say what you want to say that's it about the faith part two faith without works is dead please go to hospital go and see a specialist if you're in nigeria and you have money please skip all these guinies i'm not saying guinies are bad they are guinies that is a guy that actually helped me so i'm not saying guinies are bad but if you've gone to several guinies and you're not getting the result that you want or you feel like things are not going as planned or you feel like there's something off please go and see a fertility specialist they are called reproductive endocrinologists go and see one of them if you have the money the money is worth it if you don't have the money then you know just go and see a doctor at least at least do the basic test and then research go on the internet go and do your own personal research and some things that i did that Nobody told me about my daughter did not tell me I saw them online. I saw other women doing it Then that the fourth one is is it or whatever the next one is please look for forums Where moms are going through the same thing that you are going through look for forums online go to baby center I think they have a fertility side. There's a there's a our Naira land. I remember then on Naira we had a page a thread or something for people that are going through infertility struggles and i remember them we used to encourage each other so many people used to give testimonies there how they got their babies and to strengthen your faith further we used to have midnight prayers at some point advice doctors doctors their numbers contacts stop. just look for forums like that and please be part of them and be active on them please and please for me oh, this will work for me i don't know about anybody else refrain from telling every tom dick and harry your problem anybody that asks you ah have had no kids ah my dear my sister this one oh hey 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 oh. refrain from doing that they can't help you if it's not your doctor who knows your case or, or in a forum where other moms are going through this and telling uh, uh, telling you about their own experiences or if it's not a mom that has gone through it personally and wants to tell you her own experiences please just Refrain from talking to everybody. Many people are going to put fear in you. Many people are going to, you know, just, just stop. Don't, just, just stop, please. Okay, thank you. <laughs> was your period regular? Mine was. Mine is about thirty to forty days since I had a miscarriage. Okay, for me, my period was actually regular. My period was twenty-eight days clockwork. When I say clockwork, I mean twenty-eight days on the dot was my cycle. But there were periods when my cycle would delay for two or three days and I'll get excited and oh maybe it's happening this month, maybe it's happening this month and then on the fourth day the period would come out and tell me nah try again next month. So yeah, um, my period was regular. But regular or irregular is not those are not those ones are not the or the fact that your period is regular does not mean that you are going to be fertile and and, the, and also your period being irregular doesn't also mean that you are infertile. But sometimes, yes, irregular menstruation can be a sign of something is off, okay? But regular menstruation is between 22 or is it 24 and 32 days or something like that. That's the range for regular um, period. So anything outside of that, I think you should see your doctor if, you know. And she said she had a miscarriage. Sorry about that. I think sometimes after a miscarriage, sometimes things might just scatter. I don't know, but... Yeah, sorry about that. I'm so sorry. Does vagina detox help? And what drug did you take? Please, I don't know why you people don't want to leave your vagina alone. Leave your vagina. <laughs> leave it alone, please. You don't need to be choking anything there. You don't need to be putting anything there. It is self-cleaning. If you feel there's any issue with you, go to the hospital. Okay? In fact, if you want to cleanse your system, take green teas. Take, um, try and do an internal detox, take fruits, take vegetables, pepper soup. If you want to cleanse yourself from inside, please leave it alone. Go to the hospital if you think there's something wrong. I don't think it helps. I don't think so. And what drug did you take? I'm going to refrain from saying the drugs I took because I'm not a doctor. I don't want to come on here and start prescribing anyhow. And I know that... <clears throat> 
even if I tell you and still put a disclaimer, so many women because of desperation will still go and get that drugs. I know I was I, I was there, so I know how this can be. Even when the person tells you no, don't take this, don't do this, don't do that one, somewhere in your mind something's telling you it doesn't matter, just try it. So please um do not take any drugs that someone prescribes to you except your doctor does it okay don't 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 do that the only drugs i know that i even took then was all this pregnant care i took pregnant care then while while waiting i took pregnant care i took folic acid those are the only two that me i took while waiting the only the other ones that i took was what the doctors prescribed for me and they had my history they had my medical records before they prescribed it um, my son is four years and I have been trying to conceive for three years now and nothing Yeah, I've heard stories like this a lot about women who were who had a child and had um, st and Struggled after already having a child um, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry about that. I don't really know what can cause it But you need to go to the hospital if you've not yet gone. Please go to the hospital something might be off You don't know or maybe It has just not happened, but it should happen it should have I think it happened I think it's easier to have a second child after you've had the first one so please see your doctor please if one takes menstrual drug does it cause infertility the pain I have the pain has been there since I started ah my dear I had serious painful menstruation throughout the time out throughout my childhood throughout my girlhood whatever even up until recently I've always had painful menstruation so um, does it cause infertility? I don't think so. I know so many women who had it and still had their kids without any problem So I don't think those drugs cause it, but please don't abuse those drugs Because I know some people carry boscopan, felvin, paracetamol, this one, that one, mix everything together and drink Please don't do that. Don't abuse drugs. How does it feel to be childless? So I can't really say how it's I know that it's a very devastating experience. You feel so sad to many disappointments It's something you really really want it's like you want it, but it's not happening. So Yeah, that's that's just it's just a very big disappointing period. Is there any test to check fertility? Does having regular miscarriages mean infertility? Yes, there are so many tests to check infertility now you guys I did a video with acid darling here on YouTube on her channel so you guys go and check her channel because some of this info we already talked about it there about the fertility test um what to what to do and what not what to say to people and what not to say to people we did on her channel and we listed out the tests that we did there so please check out her channel and watch the video does having regular miscarriages mean infertility um I think it means something is wrong it doesn't mean infertility because for you to have a miscarriage it means that you're actually getting pregnant so yeah i don't think it means infertility in that sense but it means that something is wrong so please go to your doctor if, see if one doctor is telling you he doesn't know go to the next please it's your money it is your money even if it's, it's a free hospital maybe your 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 work clinic or your husband's work clinic or whatever if he, if it's not working out for you please look for another doctor okay yeah but really sorry about having um, regular miscarriages. I can't even imagine what you are going through. So sorry. Did age have anything to do with it? No, age has nothing to do with it, but age can have something to do with it. Okay, the more advanced you are in age, the harder it is for you to get pregnant. It's not me saying it, it's science, it's there, the teacher is there. Doctors will tell you the harder it is to get pregnant. So if you're a kind of person that you really want children, it is advisable to start early. And the good thing is, for me, I married early, but, well, early in Nigerian sense, because 23 is not really too early for me, because I already finished school. But yeah, I got married early, you know. So, getting married early, at least I had enough time to really find out what was wrong, and I still had my two kids before I turned 30. Okay, so starting early actually helps, and it's easier for them to combat it when you're younger than when you're older. So, that's all I'll say about that. Um, what is your favorite... <laughs> Check this one. This one is Chinelo. She said, what is your favorite sex position when trying or not? I know it's doggy. <laughs> My favorite position is monkey, <laughs> snake in the monkey shadow, hidden dragon, crouching tiger, hidden dragon <laughs> position. <laughs> and the next question is, did you try ovulation drugs? And if yes, did they cause dryness on the altar of communion? <laughs> Yes, I took ovulation drugs before I had um, Cora. Did they cause dryness? Um, I remember reading that they caused dryness, so I bought Precede. 
Precede is the lubricant that is said to be safe for conception. It's basically water-based and doesn't clash with the sperm and all that. So I bought Precede then. I don't remember using it much. I don't remember using it much because I didn't really have that. I don't think I had a problem with dryness. But I know it causes dryness in a lot of women. But I didn't take the ovulation drugs for too long. So that might be why I didn't... I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I heard it causes dryness. What exactly was the cause of your infertility? And what do you think women who are struggling to take in should do? Cause of my infertility unexplained till now. I really don't know what the cause is. But like I said, check the link I, I'm going to leave in the description box. One of those things was it i think mine was a combination of stress and i think that was not really physiological i don't know how to explain it i don't think it was really physiological it was unexplained anyway so i don't really know and what do you think women who are struggling to take in should do like i said earlier advice you on what to do so yeah they should do that but be on your see don't give up don't allow anybody discourage you there are women who have waited for so long for nothing okay for nothing because they didn't they didn't take action so please don't allow anybody to discourage you as i'm talking just block your ears go for what you want to go for okay exhaust all your options when you finish exhausting all your options that's when you know okay yes i can listen to anybody but if you're not exhausting all your options please don't listen to anybody telling you to wait or to or it will happen when you, when you forget about it like Tell me where that one is written. Even the Bible says, tell me where it's written. <laughs> was your period not consistent? Or was it? My period was consistent. Like every single month I had a period. Every single month it was fairly within normal. I didn't even have, I think it was just one that I had a 25, a 35 day cycle and I, I thought for sure I was pregnant. It happened just once in that whole four years. Every other time it was like clockwork or maybe two days late, which is really still like clockwork for most women what do you mean by rainbow baby okay a rainbow baby is a baby you had after a miscarriage so um, i don't know if you guys know this but my first pregnancy ended in a miscarriage and i had cora after that child so cora is like my rainbow baby she was the rainbow after the storm she was god's promise to me that it was not going to happen again that's how i see it anyway it was not going to happen again so yes cora is my rainbow baby when you say cora okay that's the next question when you say cora was a rainbow baby just clarifying that you had you have experienced a miscarriage before yes i've experienced a miscarriage before it was the most painful experience of my entire life i don't wish it on anybody i don't pray for it on anybody i don't pray to experience it again if there's anybody here that's going through it i'm really sorry i really sympathize with you i really if you need me to if you need, if you need to reach out to me to help you through it please reach out to me but i pray for anybody who's watching this video right now you will never experience miscarriage you're going to carry your babies your babies are going to be there safe healthy and in your arms at the end of the day amen um sorry i'm rushing <laughs> okay is it true that having small ovaries or having ovarian cysts will make you infertile I don't know what small ovaries mean. I've never really heard of small ovaries, but I've heard of ovarian cysts. And ovarian cysts are basically like small pockets of water or something in your ovaries or whatever. Basically, ovarian cysts do not cause infertility. A lot of women have had ovarian cysts and had their children. A lot of, children, a lot of women not even know that they had ovarian cysts and they had their children normally. It wasn't really a problem. The time when people realize that they have ovarian cysts, most times is when, the, when one ruptures and I head is really painful. The story that comes to my mind when I, when I think of ovarian cysts rupturing is Kim Kardashian. I remember when she had her first, when she was pregnant with not, yeah, when she was pregnant with Nori, she had, um, a ruptured ovarian cyst and she, it was the way she acted it was like she, it, she, it was really um very painful so yeah i think when it ruptures it's very painful but ordinarily ovarian cysts do not cause infertility except ovarian cysts are caused by um endometriosis i don't know that it has the endometri endometriosis endometriosis that's what yes uh -huh. If ovarian cyst is caused by it then yes it can cause infertility then in the the, the that thing itself causes infertility and i heard it's really really bad so yes and then pcos pcos too polycystic polycystic ovarian syndrome so it also causes ovarian cysts and that might cause it but it's not the ovarian cyst itself that causes infertility i don't know if that makes sense yeah did you change your diet if so what did you eliminate well to be honest but be honest <laughs> i changed my diet but i didn't stick to it i know i did um keto for a while I did keto for a while before I had um, the first pregnancy that I lost. I did keto for a while. After that, I, I ate 
normal basically i ate normal but i wasn't really I was I was I was conscious of what I was eating. Let me just put it that way. I was of it. So even though I cheated a lot of times, even though I ate a lot of times, but I quickly stopped myself. So yeah, but I know it helps. Did you exercise? If so, what kind what type of exercise? Uh I did exercise. I exercised but not it wasn't frequent. See honestly, my own is not a case of exercising and eat, and uh, eating right. Okay, so but I know it helps. So if you're reading this or if you're watching this and you are thinking of trying them so please do it can't hurt in the, in the first place and trust me you want to be in the best shape of your life when you have your kids and after you have your kids so yeah it helps so please do it is good how much does ivf cost in nigeria in dollars kenya is around four five for as four five dollars around five hundred dollars um I think IVF in Nigeria is about a million plus. I know it's, it's, it's a million plus. So I'll convert it and put it on the screen. I know it's a million plus, but I, I don't know. I really don't know. I didn't do I didn't do any research on IVF. Yeah. How can hormones contribute to delayed pregnancy? I refuse infertility in Jesus' name. Amen, sis. Yes, actually, I prefer calling it delayed pregnancy or waiting to conceive instead of infertility and TTC. I prefer waiting to, to conceive or delayed pregnancy. So, how do hormones hormones contribute? My dear, hormones are everything, you know, as a woman, in fact, as human beings basically, but as a woman, hormones are everything. It's hormones that trigger your ovaries to produce eggs. Yeah, yes. Hormones trigger your, your your ovaries to produce eggs. Hormones trigger your ovaries to release those eggs. Hormones trigger your body to your um your uterus to prepare for a baby to thicken and prepare for a baby or whatever it makes it conducive for a baby. It's hormones that trigger it. Hormones are actually very important and hormones are the easiest to to go off like that's easiest things to go off in in a woman's body so yeah hormones are very very important the fs fsh um lf or something whatever 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 anyway progesterone progesterone is a hormone it's very important i had to be on progesterone after i, I conceived cora like while i was pregnant for cora i was on progesterone for 13 weeks okay so that's it basically i think i'm done with all the questions if i didn't answer your question if i missed it for some reason please leave it in the comments down below and i'll respond to them but i think i answered basically everything so i'm just going to wrap up by giving you guys my own personal advice like i said before please having faith is very important when the month i conceived cora eh, let me tell you what i did i told my husband see you know that this month we are going to get pregnant okay we need to enjoy ourselves so like we need to enjoy ourselves because after this now we're not going to be together alone for the rest of our lives like i was serious about it he was just smiling the kind of person that smiles a lot and him too his face was really strong in fact even when my face was wavering in the beginning his face was very strong he never for he never for one day said anything to to mean or to or to uh connote or whatever that will never have kids he never for one decided anything like that it was me that was josie sometimes but yeah so you really have to have faith in fact for ever's own turn i calculated it i told myself that when cora is a year and three months a year and two months i was going to get pregnant for um my next child because i wanted them to have exact two years between the two of them and yeah eva was born a week after Cora's second birthday so exactly two years so faith is very important i can't stress it enough and like i said faith does not tolerate fear okay and one thing fear wants you to do is say negative think negative do negative act negative see let me tell you something while i was before i had Cora, i bought baby clothes just just a few baby clothes i bought baby clothes my mom gave me a set of baby shoes and socks when i, I was getting married like one of the things she bought for me you know i had baby bath then i'll go with, with my flat tummy i'll go to wear those things that i'll be showing my tummy and say this baby when are you coming now look at this fine dress i'm supposed to come and wear this fine dress i'm supposed to come and wear this fine shoe 
that's what I was doing. Like I was so adamant. I remember my pastor there, because my pastor actually stayed 10 years before they had their first child. So my pastor used to tell us then that his wife would go in the night after praying midnight prayer, she would do her hand like she's carrying her baby, like she's rocking her baby to sleep in the middle of the night. My dear, I started doing it though. I used to do my hand like I'm carrying my baby. Like it might sound stupid to people, but it's something I was doing just to help me be in the right frame of mind, you know. So those are the kind of things I did and yeah then if people ask me do you have kids I'll say yes I have kids they'll ask me how many I'll say two where are they my kid I'll, I'll, I'll just tell them oh I have two kids so they are in heaven people will be like ah what do you mean they are in heaven I'll say yes so like God is still preparing them to come down you know they are still checking out Nigeria to be sure that it's conducive enough for them to come down so I was never one of those people that would be going around and be saying, oh, my life is over. Um, so, in fact, I remember then, there was this um, blog that I used to talk a lot then. I never gave anybody the idea that I didn't have kids. I used to talk about kids. I used to, I used to advise people about what to do with their kids because then I was also reading stuff, a lot of stuff about children, about kids. So, when people talk about kids, I used to, I used to follow and comment. Maybe people thought I had like maybe five children or something. Don't know that I've never had kids. I've not had, I do not have kids at all. So, yeah, you have to be pro proactive. When you have faith, you are proactive. You read what you need to do. You do what you need to do. You talk how you need to talk. That's my personal opinion. It might not work for everybody. I don't know if it, if it will work for everybody, but it works for me. I know a couple of women who it also worked for. So yeah, faith is very important. Do all your tests. If you see any health doctor sponsored by the devil, tell him, devil, get deep behind me and keep moving, okay? Don't stop with any doctor that is not doing, giving what you want. Any doctor that sounds, that, that doesn't sound convincing, please move on to the next. There are so many doctors in Nigeria. There are so many REs in Nigeria. That you can go to so don't don't get don't feel like you're stuck with anybody okay um yeah just get ready okay get ready because your babies are coming soon in jesus name amen i'm using myself as a point of contact to any woman out there who wants to have kids who desires to have kids who is trying to have kids who is waiting to conceive the testimony is coming soon the way god did it for me he's going to do it for you and much more okay if you want twins you get twins if you want triplets a day if you want 10 children they are coming just get ready okay <laughs> Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said, I did a collab with Acid Darling on her channel. Go check it out if you'd like to know more about our journeys and um, infertility in general. Yeah, and um, that's it. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, please. Also, share, 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 share this video. This one I'm telling you to share it. I don't share, I don't tell you guys to share most of my videos. Like, I don't really feel the need to share my vlogs and all that. But this video, please share it. You don't know who on your Facebook, your Instagram, your everywhere. You don't know who needs the information that I just said in this video. So, or even the links below and all that. So, please, okay, share this video. I also did a video telling you guys about my journey. I'm going to leave a um, a card for it and I'm going to also leave the link in the description box and yeah that's it guys thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video bye